Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-Minus 365. Today's episode, we're covering the updates for Microsoft in July 2023. This includes some of the highlights from Microsoft Inspire. So a lot to unpack today, but as always, comment below with the feature functionality that you're most excited about. And like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so just a quick reminder before we get into the updates today, I do have a blog post I supplement this video with with more information about all these announcements and helpful links like more details about it, demo videos, things like that. So definitely check out that video after you're done here. Getting into it though, we're going to start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. We're going to start with co-piloted Microsoft Teams, which was one of the announcements for Microsoft Inspire. But basically here, this is introducing co-pilot into the Teams phone experience and Teams chat experience. You can see that here visually, but within the chat experience or phone experience, you have the ability to summarize the information. Like you can see here with the calling information, you can summarize the call as it exists while you're live, still on that call. And you can do the same with chat messages, things like that. It'd be interesting to see how accurate this is and how helpful it is, but it's now available in the preview for customers in that early access program, which is very limited and then the GA dates are still TBD. So just some more interesting co-pile announcements coming into different products here with Microsoft. So the next one here is Meet App on Microsoft Teams. This is a dedicated app that'll be on your left-hand nav here, which summarizes your meetings throughout the week and has some helpful content here surfaced as well, such as previous meetings, the attachments in that meeting, things like that. It's available for both the regular and premium Teams experience. With premium, you get more of the AI-enabled content, such as the summarizations, those types of things. This will happen mid-October, be complete by mid-November. Next one here is the shared device license on mobile app for Android. So this is basically giving you the ability to have a shared device experience for an Android. You can set it up as a shared device and gives you features such as the walkie-talkie experience, the calling experience, those types of things as well. This will happen late August and be complete by early September. Next one's here, we're gonna start with deploying the new Microsoft Teams within 365 apps. Many of you may not be familiar, but there is a new version of Microsoft Teams that everybody has had a toggle up of their Teams bar that says try the new Teams. And effectively, they're going to be pushing this out as part of the installations for Microsoft 365 apps for Windows. I will go through, I've linked some more information about this in my blog post, but they do say they're effectively pushing this out while still pushing out the legacy client as well too, which is not, in my opinion, what I would want to have happen. You would want either one or the other. So depending on how you deploy the apps, depending on your channel for updates, those types of things, this could affect you differently, which is why I would link and, and show that additional documentation you should probably check out. The next one here is a thousand channels per team. I don't know why somebody would need this many channels per team, but apparently there was enough of a request based off of the 200 channel limit in order for Microsoft to go ahead and up this as well here too. I think if you're an SMB, you should never get anywhere close to this. Otherwise you're probably just mismanaging teams. Uh, but this is something that is now available if you need that uh, within a particular organization. This will happen mid August and be complete by late August. Next one here, the channel meeting invitation. This is giving you the ability, especially if you have or organize around sending out meeting invites for the entire channel for a particular team's environment as well here too. Previously, the notifications around this were not very great in setting up the invites, those types of things as well here too. So this is just giving more of a streamlined method of being able to send that out, giving users proper notifications, and then having that show up on their personal calendars of all the channel members. This will happen early August and be complete by mid-August. Next one here is kind of a nice to have, which is just simply saying that you can preview or play the stream videos within the Teams experience. So previous to this, you just had to pop into the stream browser window. You would be redirected there instead of having to, or just being able to stay within Teams. So this is again, nice to have. This will happen late July, be complete by late August. Next one here is if you're adopting shared channels and you want to have some more granular ability for security requirements about external collaboration. 
Uh, generally speaking, you should be locking down your environment to not let anybody just allow the invite to basically anybody out there, whether that's a certain user, a certain organization. You can leverage the external collaboration settings within your environment to basically whitelist organizations, and that's how you should do it from a security sense. But obviously, this can create some friction. So they're giving you the ability to link out to your own custom support page or documentation or whatever you might want to do there so that users know how to contact you to get another external user added or external domain. And this is their experience that you see down below. This will happen early August, be complete by mid-August. Next one here is another nice to have, but this is if you're adopting Teams Rooms. This is called Cloud IntelliFrame. And basically it gives you the ability to have this meeting experience where the camera is visualizing on the meeting participants that are talking and it has this smart video feed that zooms in on their face and eliminates certain distractions when you're talking about looking into an entire meeting room where you just see more of that outside view versus the narrow focus view of whoever's talking. And so I can't say the full functionality of this without actually seeing it firsthand, but it does seem interesting, especially if you're leveraging Teams rooms a lot or have remote hybrid work going on. This will happen mid-August, be complete by early September. Shifting into Azure AD here, which is becoming a Microsoft Entre AD, if you didn't already know this, this is just a name change here that is folding Azure Active Directory under the larger Entra product umbrella, and they're renaming Azure Active Directory to Entra ID. This is not going to affect anything with your licensing, and there's no action that you need to take. It's simply a naming change, and they'll be incorporating this definitively throughout the rest of this year. As far as making that change, and down below here is just that logo that they have now for Entra ID that you'll see whenever you're in that admin center versus the legacy one that I have up in the top left corner for Azure Active Directory. So with this also came some new introduction of new products. And this one I find very interesting, which is these two products, which is Entra Internet Access and Entra Private Access. So basically Microsoft's getting into network protection here with these two services. And this is allowing you to have certain dedicated tunnels and streams for your internet traffic, and that includes the internet traffic going to things like your 365 applications. And this works really uniquely with conditional access. And the private access one is even more interesting to me because it gives you private access into your apps and certain resources as well here too, which effectively could replace your legacy VPNs and things like that. So it's a more modern way of looking at things. And it's powerful because it ties into existing conditional access policies that you have and it's integrated into that experience as well here too. So there's a lot to unpack with these. If you want to check out more, I have links to all the information as well as how you get into the preview as well here too. But pricing and general availability is still to be determined. They haven't announced that yet either. Another new feature here coming into the Entra environment here with Entra ID is this restricted management administrative units. So administrative units have been out for a little bit of time now. Not a lot of people, I think, leverage them completely, but they do allow you to bucketize certain environments or resources within your Azure Active Directory environment so that you can apply certain levels of control when it comes to security. What this is doing is effectively expanding that to say that you can restrict the administration of certain groups, users, devices, those types of things as well here too, to a predefined set of people. And by doing so, you override certain levels of security as it relates to highly privileged users, which is to say that if you set this up for a certain amount of users that are just regular users within the company, then even a global administrator, if they're not added to that group, or that administrative unit would not be able to administer the users as part of that. Now that's hard to conceptualize, I think for me just talking to it, but there's some videos already out online that'll link as well that shows you a demonstration of this. I think this diagram, which is from Microsoft down below, is not exactly the fit for the typical SMB because we're not worldwide, but similar concept if you have a larger organization that has multiple sites, or you just want to partition out the ability to administer certain levels of users or groups within the organization, you should be trying to partition that as much as possible 
if you want a model of least privilege and to reduce your attack surface if we're talking about security indicators alone. So this is pretty cool. This is GA today. You can play around with it. I'll link th below the uh, documentation as well in the blog, which shows you how to set this up. It's definitely something I would check out. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, this is giving you the ability to uninstall apps in the company portal for Windows, basically self-service for users to uninstall their own applications. This includes the Win32 and Microsoft Store apps. Adoption on this, I think, especially in the SMB space, or at least the space that we operated in with MSPs, I think it's going to be very lowly adopted. It's hard to think about users uninstalling their own applications, but it is nice that it's there if you wanted to direct them there. Instead of having to go through the process of elevating privileges, uninstalling the application, doing those types of things as well here too, which requires a lot of your service technicians to be manually doing that as well. This will be complete as far as the rollout goes by the end of August. Shifting into Microsoft Edge here, I made Microsoft Edge its own category because there's been a lot of announcements around it lately. But one of the ones that was really cool here is this management service in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So this is GA, so you can find this under the settings section of the Admin Center. It has Microsoft Edge now. And this allows you to create managed policies and actual extensions within Edge that you can then push out to your Azure Active Directory groups within this user interface. So lots to unpack for this one. I linked some more documentation on it just so you can get up to speed, but definitely cool. It's definitely pushing, I think, more and more people to start to use Edge versus traditional companies. I think the majority have wanted to use something like Chrome in the past as well here too, which may not change, but they're adding a lot of cool features for us to use, including uh, Microsoft Edge and this management capability as well as you know the Bing features, which we'll get into here in a minute. The other one here is Microsoft Edge for Business which effectively at the end of the day, if I go high level here, it's allowing you to separate out a work account versus a personal account on your browsing experience. So they have their own separate caches, storage locations, things like that. It's a lot of data protection that you're getting with this from just having a managed browser that you can operate in, especially with all the corporate data that you have there. This is currently in preview for certain versions of Edge and it will be on by default with certain versions of Edge starting that week of August 17th that you see here as well too. This was another big announcement from Microsoft Inspire, but Microsoft Bing Chat Enterprise is in preview today. In my blog, I show you how to enable this. It will become generally available pretty soon here and it'll be just on by default. But if you wanna start trying this out today, you can. The cool part is it does come part of your base level packages if you have Microsoft Business Standard or Business Premium or E3 or E5. So while it has that enterprise in its name, it is included with some of the business plans or more popular business plans as well. So you can go try this out today. And what's great about it is obviously it's like having ChatGBT, but not exposing your corporate data or your sensitive data to a public large language model, which is what nobody really should be doing here. So. Um, I think this is a great ad. I think it's great they're incorporating it versus making it a, a paid cost outside of your base level licensing for the most part. If you don't have any of those plans, it is standalone. They're, they're going to come out with a standalone offer for like $5 a user a month. But most people have similar plans and could use this as well here too. Shifting into the last section here, this is the admin section. So this was probably the most talked about. Uh, announcement at Microsoft Inspire, which is the pricing availability for Copilot. And so it's effectively $30 per user per month as an add-on for your base level plans here as well. And this is a really tough pill to swallow, I think, just because it is, if you're talking about standard or premium, you're talking about over 100% increase in cost. And that is largely for a lot of SMBs out there, this is a nice to have license versus a necessity, depending on how the business looks at it. But the majority, I think, are gonna look at this as a nice to have, and they're not gonna to wanna to double their spend to be able to achieve that either. So they're gonna to have to see something that's very tangible to say that there's a definite ROI that makes up for that particular cost as well here too. Too early to say, especially because general availability is not yet defined. But once this does come out, I'll be interested to see how many people can absorb that particular price point and the adoption of it, especially in SMB. 
And then the other announcement here I thought that was very interesting, which is another two products that Microsoft introduced, which is Microsoft 365 Backup and Microsoft 365 Archive. And Backup, as you can see here, provides recovery of your OneDrive, SharePoint, and Exchange data. Some of you may be wondering where's Teams. And if you think about it just for a second, you realize that Teams is all backed by SharePoint sites and the document repositories that are behind those. So it's technically included there as well. It just doesn't include Teams chats as an example, which other backup providers in some cases do, like Drop Suite is a very common one in our ecosystem if we talk about the MSB space. So I'll be interested to see, they haven't come up with pricing for this yet and availability, but you can watch a demo of this from Inspire that I link in my blog post if you wanna check it out. I think it will be interesting when they drop price because that might be something that's an easy switching cost for a lot of people out there who are with an existing provider to have that all under one umbrella. But there's a lot of things you gotta factor in like the e-discovery components of it, You know, the multi-tenancy concepts obviously won't be there those types of things as well here too. I want to make a larger matrix once we do get pricing and see some more of the availability, but I think it is going to be a compelling offering for a lot, especially since they also have APIs that you can leverage as well here too, to basically you know show this into another provider. And there's a lot of third parties that are already partnering with them, like Barracuda, for instance. The archiving piece to this is also interesting but I think it's larger organizations that are gonna to look to that. It's giving you this cold data storage tier to help with inactive or aging data that's in SharePoint. So you have to be large adopters of SharePoint, maybe have terabytes of data within there as well. But it does give you the ability to effectively scale out without needing to purchase additional storage if you're doing the added storage with SharePoint as well, if you can archive legacy um, or aging data within those environments. And then the last feature or update I wanted to talk about here is related to our favorite uh, new, new commerce experience, which is probably the worst thing that's come out from Microsoft in many, many years. But they're basically, with this announcement, ripping the Band-Aid on pushing everybody over into new commerce. So it's traditionally just been for commercial offerings and not for the nonprofits, the academics, and government. But now they're encompassing all of those other sectors as well here too for being able to purchase new commerce experience licensing. And then in 2024, they're just going to start automatically migrating you whenever you have your upcoming renewal date, whether that's on commercial or it's the public sector. So if you've been hanging on legacy CSP and you've been on commercial, you've been able to do that. You just haven't been getting any incentives, but when you move into next year, they're just gonna force you into that which forces you into the contract terms, which forces you into the um, cancellation policies that are more strict, those types of things as well here too. So overall, not great news, but just something to be aware of, especially if you have, if you're an MSP and you have a lot of customers um, in the academic sector, nonprofit or government as well. Okay guys, that's everything I have for you in today's video. Comment below with any questions or comments. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.